have miracles happen in our lives and that we serve a God of miracles. I think some of the miracles that the world does not see is that He is our peace, He is our portion, and He can carry us through problems. And we are fortunate to have a wonderful man of God who the Lord has anointed with a wonderful testimony. Andy, why don't you come and share with us? Hi, my name is Andy McGlynn. I'm from Deal Park, New Jersey. And it was about four years ago that we first started to notice that the right side of my face was weaker than the left side. And slowly it got worse. I lost more and more muscles. And then one day the movement of my right eye was affected. I could no longer turn it into its outer corner. I mentioned that to my doctor, and he said, Andy, I'd like you to see a neurologist. The neurologist put me through some tests. He said, Andy, the CAT scan shows that you have what appears to be a blood vessel malformation in the brain stem. Now, the brain stem is the top of the spinal column. It's right in the middle of the head. It's a major nerve center. He said, Andy, that's not an operable region. I don't know what to recommend. Maybe you ought to consider a second opinion. I went to New York City to a very large research hospital. And a doctor up there looked at the same scans and said, Andy, you have a brain tumor. And I felt like he had handed me a death sentence. Because to me, that's the kind of thing that you only read about in a book, and it never really happens. And I was stunned that it would happen to me. The doctor had another surprise. He said, Andy, I think that tumor is operable. I was a little confused by that. I didn't know who to believe. He said, I'd like you to meet our chief neurosurgeon. This man is a world-famous doctor. He looked at the scans and concurred with the diagnosis. He said, it is a tumor. It's not cancerous, but it has paralyzed your face and your eye, and it can do more damage than it has already done. We need to get it out. I will be able to operate, but I will not be able to get it all. And in time, it will regrow. But God did something with me. First, he sent me his peace, so that I could face that each day. And then God started to call people to pray for me. Now, we saw in the story of Elijah how God really liked his prayers. James tells us that the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. I knew that. And I tried to get people to pray. But then people whom I had never met started praying for me. And I heard that churches I had never heard of before were praying for me. And the number of people grew and grew until I couldn't count them anymore. I believe God had called them to pray. I thought maybe God would take the tumor away and I wouldn't have to go through a surgery at all. But my next CAT scan showed that it was still there. And I had done all before the Lord that I felt that I had to do. Now I had to follow through the doors that He was opening. And that was surgery. So I went. My surgery was in July of 1984. I had just graduated from high school. It took them seven hours. They went into the back of my head and took out most of the tumor. They left some of it. They told me that it would regrow. In August, I had another scan, and we could still see that they had left part of the tumor in my head. I went to my first semester of college, and in January, I had another scan. I brought it into the doctor, and he couldn't find anything wrong with it. The tumor was gone. He had said it wouldn't go away. And he hadn't given me any radiation, and he didn't know what to say. But I know. God had taken the tumor. God had reached his mighty hand inside my head and pulled out the rest of that tumor. God had heard the prayers of his people and had proved himself mighty. Now God could have taken that tumor away before the surgery. But he didn't. He let me go through that experience. God could have healed my face at the same time. But he didn't. Sometimes I still don't know why. But he said to me, Andy, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. 
And this is hard for me to say because even tonight as I was standing on the risers and noticing that my hearing as a result of the surgery is not quite as crisp as it once was. And I ask myself, does that verse still mean something to me? The answer is yes. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. Life storms hit us all. When I faced my surgery, I felt like my whole life had been stripped away. But because I'd given it to Jesus, I found that He never left me. He was there and He carried me through that surgery and that summer, that whole year. And I know that no matter what kind of problem you're facing tonight, Jesus is able to carry you through it. You see, He knows what it is to suffer. He even knows what it is to say goodbye. And He carries us through our troubles. He's right there, and He'll carry you tonight. Just love Him. There is no problem to be. God cannot solve it. There is no mountain to talk. He cannot move it. There is no storm to dawn. God cannot calm it. There is no sorrow too deep, he cannot soothe thee. If he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders, I know my problem that he will carry you.
exciting thing is that we have a choice whom we can serve. That we can come before the Lord and say, I choose to follow you. I want you to change my life. Every single day, we have learned what it is to be an Elijah. To be a man or woman of God who is willing to offer up nothing to the Lord if it cost us nothing, as it said in 2 Samuel. I wish I could uh, tell you all the testimonies of, of everything that's happened in the past three months. To show the integrity of the ministry and the power of the Lord has changed our lives. This has been a wonderful summer of God's miracles. continually said to our audiences when Elijah was the weakest he was the strongest in the Lord after he felt so weak that he wanted to die he received a new commission he was called to anoint Elisha Elisha was a very young man and if you read in 2 Kings you know that the nation of Israel didn't want to follow him because they didn't trust his spiritual growth. But Elisha went on and doubled Elijah's ministry. And we are excited to go home tomorrow and ask for a double portion. The only way that we can really share with you the last three months of celebration is to personalize it a little bit. And I'm just going to come to you. And I'll sit down. I want you to tell me what you guys have learned just in a sentence or two after doing this program for so much. And what the Lord is going to have in store for you when you go home, Rick. Well, I came on tour, and um, the last month was a struggle for me spiritually because I was so busy with, with getting everything done. And, um, I got to the Rehosa camp, and uh, right there and there, I, I knew that God wanted me here, wanted me in this ministry, and uh, probably the greatest thing that uh, it really challenged me was to have a strong prayer life. Um, I can testify, uh, before I came on tour, that I did not really have much of a prayer life, and um, through the circumstances and, 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 and the different things that happened on tour and uh, the people we get to minister to and the people that we really cared and have a heart for. I've learned and I think the Lord has helped in my heart to really pray for these people and, and also um, pray for different things um, in my life. Good lessons to be learned. Sandy. Beginning on tour, I set some goals for myself. One of those goals was to be able to share the Lord with someone overseas. And um, last night, before our concert, I prayed, I said, Lord, you know, I really want to witness and share with someone. And he granted that request. And afterwards, I was able to share with a Swiss lady who spoke English how to have the joy of Jesus in your heart. And it was so special. And God is so good. And I learned that through prayer powerful, that if you just really pray to God and trust and believe and receive it, He'll give it to you. I was a latecomer on tour, and I thought that was going to make a difference, but it didn't. I learned just as much as everybody else, and I learned, you know, one big thing, there's power in prayer, and it's, it's, it's a powerful thing. There's one special thing that I learned out of out of the whole time I've been on tour, and that is that there is such a sweet, sweet peace when you're in the will of God. And this is the first time in my life that I've ever felt I was in the perfect will of God. And I can't explain how it feels. It's just wonderful. <coughs> my future is so uncertain when I go home. I don't know what's next. College, another ministry, I don't know. And you think that, that would be confusing or frustrating. I'm not frustrated, I'm not confused, because it's in God's hands, and He's got it under control, and I'm 
I'll just leave it at all to him and he'll open the doors. And he'll guide me and direct me every day. Siri. It's been really exciting for me because I've learned that you just have to give absolutely everything in your life to God. You can't hold back anything. I tried to hold back my flute and say, this is mine, and I'm going to do it on my own, but you just can't do it. And I gave it to him, and he's done so much through me and my ability to play the flute, and I just praise him for that. And you just, it's so incredible the things he can do when you give it all to him. And I just praise God that I was able to learn that on this tour, because now I'm just going to go back to school, and I'm not worried about anything, because I know he's in his hands, and it's, it's his, and it's just, it's wonderful. Here running theme, the power of the Lord through the humbleness of prayer. It's been our prayer tonight that you are going to walk away from this. And your God awareness is going to be increased. And that you will be humbled and convicted. Maybe that your prayer life needs to be something a little bit more. If you will allow me the privilege of uh, turning my back just for one second, I have a song that I want to sing to the group tonight. And you know, we're from all different states. I'm sure you must have from Canada. And uh, we've spent three months encouraging one another, as it says in the Bible, to do. Confronting one another. Leading lives of just young, ordinary people searching for God and God doing extraordinary things. And the only way that we are going to keep this ministry going within each other is to pray for one another. And so, Corwin, if you could turn the lights up full blast and come on stage and Deanne and Joel, can you come up on stage too? Joel is our bus driver. He's been with us for three months. He's been a Wonderful blessing to us all. No matter how 
years again, maybe. And uh, you know what? We as Christians can never ever just get together and pretend that uh, we worshiped without taking something home with us. So take everything that you've heard tonight and everything that you've learned and go spread it around Garden Grove. God's love wasn't meant to be kept inside. It was meant to be shared. Amen? Amen. Good night. God bless you.